Hi everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhouseonboon.com where I like to share our handmade home food from scratch and our simple lifestyle here on Boone Street. And today I want to introduce you to our new baby boy, Micah and tell you about his home birth story. So this is obviously a little bit more sensitive topic than I typically cover, but I've had a lot of people curious about my home birth, so I wanted to share all about it and just the story of how this little guy came into the world. Micah was born almost three days ago on Tuesday at 7 p.m. So Monday, which was one day after my due date, I started having contractions about every 30 minutes apart, just kind of more or less sporadically throughout the day and the afternoon. And I had plans that evening to go out to dinner with some blogging friends. And I was thinking, oh, this cannot be labor because I really want to go tonight. I don't want to miss it. And I was fully planning on going a week past my due date because my last two kids came at least a week past. So I thought there is absolutely no way I'm going into labor the day after my due date. So I kind of ignored them and I went out to dinner and they I didn't have very many while I was gone. And so I was thinking, oh, it's probably just false labor. Well, then I continued to have them very sporadically throughout that night and they kind of kept me awake. But then by morning, I told my mom and my sister that I had contractions throughout the night and they went completely away, so nothing. But I thought, I'm sure I'm not in labor and we'll just end up going another week. And later that day, around one in the afternoon, they finally started coming on again and about every 10 minutes. And I was still sort of in denial about it. I was like, these feel like contractions, but I'm only a day, I guess at this point, two days past my due date. So there's just no way I could be in labor. That's how sure I was that I would go at least a week overdue. By about three, when they had been coming every 10 minutes for two hours, I was starting to get more convinced. So I started doing some last minute preparation. I was gathering up the rest of the things I needed in my birth bag because I had kind of put that off, not thinking I'd be having the baby anytime soon. So I gathered a bunch of towels and baby blankets and his hat, and I put um, the shower curtain on the bed and the extra sheet because I knew I'd be having the baby right here. I was still not convinced I was in labor, but I also didn't want to be in the middle of really hard labor and then trying to figure out how to get my bed covered with a shower curtain. So I was getting everything just kind of ready, putting waterproof covers on the pillows, and getting the bed and the birth space sort of tidied up because I didn't want to also be having difficult labor in like a messy room. Around 3.30, my husband came home and his mom was going to come over so that we could go on a coffee date. When she got here, I decided that we probably couldn't go on the coffee date. So that was 3.30 in the afternoon and the contractions were still only 10 minutes apart, but they were really strong and I needed to get completely relaxed through them in order to get through them without pain. We studied the Bradley method of childbirth and I've used it for all of my natural births. Basically, if you can get your body in a completely relaxed state without any fear and tension, you can experience contractions that are very powerful but not painful. And so at this point, I'm still experiencing that. I'm really relaxed. I throw myself down and relax from head to toe through each contraction, feel the strong sensation, but not pain. So around this time, I decide to call my midwife just to give her a heads up because she's the same midwife I've had for my last two babies. And the first baby I was, instead of delivering at home, I was gonna deliver at the birth center and I delivered him in the vehicle on the way. So she, I knew, would want to know that I was having contractions because she's had a past with me not making it. She told me she was about an hour from our house and to call her if things got closer together and she would hurry. Otherwise, she would make her way out this way around 5.30 or 6. I told her, okay, if they get any closer, I'll give you a call. Around, I believe, 5, I think? I wrote this whole story on my blog already right after the birth, so the details are a little bit more clear and there's pictures and all of that. That'll be on the blog and I will link it below. I told her that they were getting closer to seven to eight minutes apart. You know, with my history, she should probably hurry up and get here. Now by this point, I was not wanting to get up in between contractions because they would come way faster and they would be way stronger and also I wouldn't be able to get back down into my relaxed position by the time the next one came 
and that is definitely not what I was trying to do. I wanted to be completely relaxed throughout the rest of this more difficult part of labor because that's the only way I could avoid pain. At this point, through the rest of the labor, I never got up again. I'm not the type of laboring woman who is rocking back and forth or any, all of my labors, I look like I'm sleeping on this bed because if I can stay completely relaxed, everything happens fast and smooth. So that is why I definitely did not wanna get up at this point. So I told her that she could start making her way out here. I continued to have them about every seven to eight minutes. They started getting a little bit closer, I think around four or five minutes. By the time she walked in my door at 6.45, they were one on top of the other. They were about two minutes apart. She kind of came in and set everything up and she asked if we had any light because the room's completely pitch black. So this is why you won't find like a cinematic home birth story on here. I would have loved to do one, but there's nothing to see. I'm laying in this bed. It's dark, my eyes are completely closed, I look like I'm sleeping the entire time. She came over to my side, because I was over here at this point, and she was just quietly waiting for me to open my eyes so she could take the, uh, my blood pressure and check his heart rate. And she made the comment that she couldn't tell when I was having contractions and when I wasn't because I just looked like I was sleeping. I opened my eyes and told her it'd be okay for her to go ahead and take my blood pressure and check his heart rate. At this point, contractions were basically a minute apart. They were one on top of the other. I did lose control through a few of them and tensed up and did feel some pain because I just couldn't relax myself. But most of them were still very manageable at this point. After about 10 minutes, I recognized that I was going through transition. I vocalized to my midwife that I don't like this part. <laughs> I told her later, I'm sorry I got so panicky and tense. And she said, you literally said, I don't like this part. That's all you said. <laughs> I was like, well, I was feeling worse in my head than that. I was not able to relax through transition. I've never been able to do that. I have read stories of women who are, and they experience these pain-free labors, and that's amazing. I can never relax that long. I can make the entire thing manageable until the transition, but I was able to recognize because of all my previous births that I was in transition, so I knew it wouldn't be long at all. So that gave me such hope that knowing that this part's pretty hard, but it's almost over, and it really was. So after I said I don't like this part, I said it's going to be soon to my midwife. I said it's going to be soon. She helped me take off my leggings and <laughs> get ready because I knew they were starting to put things under me because by that I meant I'm pushing. She had been there about 15 minutes at this point. First I pushed out the bag of waters, then I got on my hands and knees and with three or four slow pushes, she kind of told me to be gentle and slow, my baby was born. She said she had been there less than 30 minutes at the time of delivery. He was delivered at 7.13 p.m. We weighed him, he was eight pounds, 11 ounces, which surprised me because my boys were my last two boys were around the same. They were eight, seven, and eight, 10, but they were over a week late. So I was thinking he would have to be about a half pound smaller, but he wasn't. He was still the same good sized boy. And he came out crying and pink and perfect. Everything went just as great as I could have expected. I guess the midwife barely made it. I hesitate to say that as a person who's had a baby in the car, like she barely made it, but she did make it and she was here. With the Bradley method, I'm able to practice relaxation throughout my pregnancy so much. I can get myself in that relaxed state. So much of labor is completely manageable. I hope that's encouraging to you. If you're planning a home birth and you're fearful, make sure to read the book, The Bradley Method of Childbirth by Susan McCutcheon. That was a great one to help me practice and get relaxed. I used it for all my natural births. Get that book and also another recommended resource for me is Childbirth Without Fear by Grantly Dick Reed. I will link them both below. They're also linked in the blog post as well as some pictures from the birth, which I'll also put at the end of this video here. Those are great to get your mindset right. Also, another tip for me is just to listen to as many positive birth stories as you can because you want your head filled with how this can be a good experience, and they are. They're amazing experiences, and fear only interferes with that process and makes everything more painful, more difficult. So if you can convince yourself that birth isn't scary and that you're not fearful of it, then you can have an experience like that. This is Micah, he's three days old. You can read on the blog also the meaning behind his name and his middle names, he has two middle names. That's our first time doing that. And 
the names we chose and why. I really hope you enjoyed this story. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. I normally share our handmade home, food from scratch, and our simple lifestyle. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.